16 years before the Salem witch hunt on the main frontier. Good night, Mercy. Good night. This little girl, Mercy Lewis, will play a central role in the Salem witch trials. At the age of three, she is living in the town of Falmouth, Maine. The attack is swift and brutal. 23 women and children killed or captured, 11 men dead. Mercy's grandparents, aunts, uncles, and most of her cousins are among the victims. Years after surviving that Indian massacre in Maine, Mercy Lewis is 18 years old and living as a servant in Salem Village. Some at our house were fighting for their lives. <laughs> who did was running and was shot. He begged of them his life. They knocked him on the head and split open his bowels. A 10-year truce with the Indians is coming to an end. News is grim. The town of York, Maine, is in flames. 50 dead, 100 taken into captivity by the Wabanakis. In January 1692, in Salem Village, it would have been bitter cold. And the news came from York about the Indian raid. Not all that far away, and people must have been terrified. Soon after hearing news of renewed Indian attacks, Mercy Lewis begins throwing fits, just like Betty and Abigail, and they are joined by others. Mercy Lewis works for the Putnam family, Anne Putnam Jr., age 12, Anne's mother, age 30, and Anne's cousin, Mary Walcott, 17. All are now acting bewitched. And it's spreading. Salem Village is a very small community, and all the afflicted would have known each other very well. There were little girls, there were teenagers and 20-somethings, and then there were some uh, married women who were also afflicted. Asked who is bewitching them, Several of the newly afflicted also accuse the minister's dark-skinned slave, Tichuba. Since the younger girl's accusations cannot be used as evidence in court, these new accusations by adult witnesses are critical. Witch! I will beat the devil out of you! Now, legal action can be taken against Tichuba. A terrible machinery has been set in motion. It will take 20 people to their graves. March, Salem Village. Seven girls and women possessed by horrifying fits. They claim to be bewitched. And it is Reverend Paris's Indian slave, Tichuba, who is invisibly attacking them. Formal complaints are filed, transforming wild accusations into a legal procedure. One that unfolded in the Salem Village Meeting House over 210 years ago. In Salem Village in early March of 1692. Um, the fields were frozen, nobody was outside working, and the place must have been jammed. Two magistrates from nearby Salem town, John Hathorne and Jonathan Corwin, come to Salem Village to conduct a preliminary examination to see if a trial is warranted. 
the accusers have been asked to point out the witch who torments them. What happens next is recorded for history in official transcripts. Tichuba, what evil spirit have you familiarity with? Why do you hurt these poor children? What harm have they done unto you? They do no harm to me, and no hurt them at all. Why have you done it? I have done nothing. I can't tell when the devil works. No. What? Hath the devil told you he hurts you? He has seen the devil. No. He tells me nothing. Catherine was an experienced magistrate, and he had obviously examined many uh, accused people before. His purpose was to elicit a confession from her. It was crucial to get confessions, to get a conviction in a capital case at this time. You had to have two witnesses to the actual act. And so, therefore, the easiest way to get a conviction was to get a confession. What is it you converse with all? The devil, for aught I know. Yeah. What appearance? Or how will he appear when he hurts them? With what shape? Or what is he like when he hurts them? She's the person who is has lived the life of being a slave. She's been hit before, and maybe it dawns on her that she'll be get hit worse. And so she tells the stories that she tells. Yesterday, I being in the lean-to chamber, I saw a thing like a man that told me to serve him. And I told him, no, I would not do such a thing. The devil, he should be a witch. What clothes does he appear to you in? Black clothes sometimes. He's a tall man with dark hair, I think. What other likenesses besides a man doth he appear to you? Sometimes like a hog. Sometimes like a great black dog. A black dog? What did she say? What? Tichuba's lurid imagery seems to cast a spell on the afflicted girls. Sometimes like a hog. Sometimes like a great black dog. I seen a yellow bird suck on another witch's finger. I seen a yellow bird suck on another witch's finger. To have the servant of the minister confess to being a witch must have been mind-boggling to people. What is really significant, though, from a, from a legal point of view, is that Tichuba has offered a confession, and that is the thing that matters the most. They have their confession. Now that they have their confession, the witchcraft is a reality. Tichuba does more than just confess. She offers up the names of her fellow witches. Who else have you seen? Poor women sometimes hurt the children. What did she say? Who were they? Goody Osborne. Goody Osborne. And Sarah Good. No. And someone I didn't know. And a tall man. One of the interesting things that Tichuba said was that she had seen the devil's book and it had these other signatures in it so that the people in the community would have known that they had to go look for other witches. This is only an examination, not a trial. Magistrates Hathorne and Corwin do not have legal authority to convict and pass sentences, but they do have the power to place suspects in custody. Tichuba is taken away to jail, along with two other witches, Sarah Good, a beggar with a bad temper, and Sarah Osborne, a woman of supposedly loose morals. 
Both deny vehemently that they are witches. But Tichuba has mentioned more witches and wizards, nine in all. That means seven others are still at large in the village. The hunt is on. Martha Corey, about 60 years old, is a respectable church member married to a prosperous, though argumentative and uneducated farmer, Giles Corey. The first three women accused were, were in one form or another outcasts uh, in the village, which was really quite a typical pattern for incidents of witchcraft accusation. Martha Corey was a full-fledged, full-covenant member of the Salem Village Church. If Martha Corey could be a witch, then anyone could be. Anne Putnam Jr. and Mercy Lewis claim that Martha Corey's specter torments them. You are now in the hands of authority. Tell me now why you hurt these persons. I do not. Who don't? Pray, give me leave to go to prayer. I wish to go to prayer. Pray, give me leave we to go to prayer. We did not send for you to go to prayer. We came to be a terror to evildoers. Tell me why you hurt these. I am an innocent person. I have never had to do with witchcraft since I was born. I am a gospel woman. Do not you see how these complain of you? Lord, open the eyes of the magistrates and ministers. Lord, show his power to discover the guilty. Tell us, who hurts these children? I do not know. In his examinations, Hathorne relies on what is called spectral evidence a statement by a witness that she sees the specter of a witch do strange things. When you signed the devil's book, essentially you gave the devil permission to take your shape and to torment others. That invisible shape was considered a specter. Cannot you tell what that man whispered? I saw nobody! But did you not hear? No! If you expect God's mercy, you must look for it in God's way by confession! Do you not see how these afflicted to charge you? Stop biting her lips! I order you to stop biting your lip! Look what you do to these girls! What harm is there in it? I can't unclench my hands! Stop biting her! Let that bird suck on your finger. The Lord have mercy. Tell me why you hurt these children or who don't. But I have no hand in it. But if you will all go hang me now, how can I help it? Witch. Witch. The more she objects, the more entangled she becomes. There is no way out of the madness. Somebody stop her. 